Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. I believe this is episode 9, hopefully I'm right. Last time we mainly worked on the castle out there, as you see I still have all the building materials in my inventory. We also worked a little bit in here, um, kind of laying out how I want the storage room to be. But the main project for today is actually going to be making a concrete converter. As you can tell, I use pretty much mainly concrete in this build, so having to use this over here is a little bit of a pain. Uh, I guess I can demonstrate how it works real quick. Uh, not actually with concrete, but with uh, logs. So basically, um, this is what you do. You just hold down right click and then left click and then this converts um, all the concrete because of the water next to it. I'm not really sure how to do this. I know I saw in an episode of Mumbo Jumbo's um, Hermitcraft, he did something similar. I'm probably going to be referencing that. Uh, I'll make sure to link that um, video in the description below. But yeah, I'm going to start digging some more of this out. Okay, so I made some progress on the hallway so far. Um, I think we're going with green in this hallway. If you head in here, I've started working on the actual concrete converter. I probably spent like a half an hour just looking at his video on Hermitcraft, but um, he actually has a video on this. Um, it's not really a tutorial, it kind of shows how it works, but it's a lot easier to look at what's happening and copy it, so uh, once I can do that, this will be a lot easier. Like in his Hermitcraft video, he doesn't show what's in the furnace, so I just assumed it was a full stack, but it's actually only 58, so I changed that. I guess I can kind of demonstrate this real quick. So super fast, obviously, which is perfect. And yeah, it's kind of crazy how fast that is. But yeah, I think I'm going to get this finished up and show you it. Okay, so I decided to jump into a test world real quick. Mainly just to test the TNT duper to make sure I'm not going to blow everything up. In my world, I think I built this wrong. Um, it would need to be going like this way instead of this way. So yeah, the TNT duper doesn't work unless you're facing north and south. I think the um the the slime need to be facing north and south. I don't know because if I turn this on real quick, let me turn the sound way down real quick. This does work if you turn it on, but according to all the videos I've seen about TNT duping, it shouldn't. I've let this run at least like probably like 50 times. Uh, maybe I'll AFK for like 30 minutes and just see if this blows up eventually. I already took it down to my world to start again, so I guess it really doesn't matter. And I'm really not sure what the rule with this is, because if I do it like this, it works as well. Yeah, I'm really not sure what the rule with this is, because they both seem to work fine. But I guess we'll build this in my world facing east and west. Okay, so before we finish up the concrete farm, I figure I'd take you guys out here to the desert where I farm my sand and show you kind of how I'm doing it now. Not 100% sure this is like the most efficient. I'm, I'm sure it's not actually. But uh, if you use a one piece of TNT, which is like four sand, right? Um, you probably get close to a stack, if not more, from one TNT. Uh, I guess I could test it out real quick. I'm gonna sleep first. So for now, I'm just gonna set off one and see how much I get. Uh, I already have 10 in my inventory. And if we pop down here, that definitely looks like more than a stack. Uh, let's see. Yeah, about two stacks um, per one TNT. I might even be able to make this better because as you can see, there's a lot not being um, mined out right here. But if you can see here, there's three blocks in between to where, from where the TNT went. So this TNT should get up to here. Um, not all the way down though. Because these are six blocks away, they're not going to interfere with each other. Uh, I might be able to push that down one more to where uh, the TNT is right here, to where there's only five blocks. I'm not really sure. Only reason I wouldn't want to do that is because I'm setting these all off at once, basically, and I don't want them to overlap and start destroying what um, what the previous TNT destroyed. So yeah, I'll show you real quick how this goes. That's a pretty quick way to get home to sand. 
And what I usually do is just mine all this out as I'm collecting the sand from the TNT. Yeah, I think this is definitely better, at least um, from a not being bored standpoint of just mindlessly mining um, sand up. And you also get some sandstone from this because that's pretty, or sandstone pretty much has no blast resistance. So um, the TNT can usually reach down to where it's at. And I get a pretty good amount every time from, um, of sandstone. Like I think I already have a couple stacks of sandstone just from using TNT. And I'm kind of hesitant to, oh, I'm already full. But yeah, um, I'm kind of hesitant to be mining all this sand out over here because I think this would probably be the place if I ever do like a desert build. Um, it'd, it'd be more over there. I don't want to just have um, a city over there or something and then right over this hill would be all of this like nasty looking um, terrain. This just seems way faster than actually just digging all the sand out. And I'm sure I'm pretty late to this um, considering the TNT get changed in 113 I think? Maybe it was 114, I don't remember. It was one of the, it was either the last update or the aquatic update. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there was a whole bunch of people talking about this. Um, if I remember correctly, I think Etho was like the first guy I saw um, doing this. I don't know if he still does. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little more experimenting with this and see if I can get this a little more efficiently or make this a little more efficient. Okay, so I just did a quick test of the TNT being five blocks away from each other and um, it doesn't seem to interfere too much with each other. Um, so this TNT is not going to set off this TNT, which I guess that really wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if we do this, so it gets two blocks away from this. And if you look at these right here, um, and these, these are, these two rows would be what I'm um, afraid of being destroyed. So let's see if that happens. And it doesn't look like they actually get destroyed, which is really good. It looks like these two are still actually here. So I think the wall of sand is still shielding it. Um, if that, I think if I pushed it one more closer, I think then they would get destroyed. Which I'm not going to try just because I don't want to waste sand. Maybe I'll try that in a test world one day. But yeah, um, now that I know I can push that one closer, that's pretty awesome. Uh, this means it's going to be even that more efficient. Because uh, there's definitely a lot less to be dug out than when you do it six wide or six across. So that's perfect. Uh, I'm probably going to fill up maybe one or two more shulker boxes and then head back. Alright, so we are back here at the concrete farm. And the redstone part of it is pretty much finished. Um, actually, it's all the way finished, I think. Um, I've actually done a little bit of a test of it and it seems to be working pretty good. Only thing is, I seem to be losing some concrete. So I did eight stacks of concrete, which is the most you can craft at one time. And I think I got about seven and a half stacks back. And that's including what's still in the system right here. So I added this to what I got just because it'll eventually be um, blown up and collected. Yeah, it seems to be losing around a half a stack every time. Um, per eight stacks, which isn't that big of a deal. I think I can live with that But if I can fix that to where it's a little better, I think I will And I was over there trading with my villagers a little bit with the um, book trade and the bookshelf and I'm thinking this would actually be perfect for um, getting the bookshelves down to books because um, so the way I'm getting um, the books now is I'm just putting them in my offhand and um, converting them like this um, but because of the instant mine with um, the beacon I have to click every time which is just annoying and um, normally I guess I could show how that should work or would normally work so with the haste 2 I have to click every time otherwise it's not gonna place another block just because it's doing it so quick I think but if I actually cover the beacon and wait for the haste to go away um, here I don't actually have to click it's um, a lot quicker to do it like this but then I would have to turn off the beacon every time I want to do this so I'm thinking just putting it through that um, converter right there would be the easiest way to do it so yeah that's just another good use for the um, for this um, that's not concrete but the next thing we actually have to work on is the collection system and where we're gonna store them so my original idea was just to have like a couple of rows of chests right here 
and just have all of them funnel into there. But now I'm thinking we might do something a little different. I'm not really in love with how this looks. It's all just green. I don't really like the green. Uh, I'm okay with that green over there, but this green I'm not really feeling too much. I think, if anything, we'll put the green on this level. Which also, on a side note from that, I'm thinking the second level will be um, kind of different, a different palette from the concrete. So we might go on a little more natural um, on the second level, so maybe more woods and stuff like that. So maybe down on the second level, the ceiling would be green, um, at least for this hallway, maybe not the whole thing. But uh, I was thinking maybe just to have every single color of concrete here. And we'll have like a shulker box um, probably like here in the wall. So it'd be where this green. So it'll probably be right there. And then we'll have the color shoot up kind of like a rainbow, I guess. Um, obviously, that's a lot more colors that are in the rainbow. But uh, it'd be all the colors in Minecraft. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. And also, I know that I said um, whenever I was building the storage room that there would be a place for concrete in here which there still might be either a we'll just have another place for concrete or we'll have the at the end of the hopper line when it's gone through the whole storage system it will also go over there to that storage system which I think wouldn't be that big of a deal so that's basically what I'm thinking is to have like we'll start off with like either black or white right here and then just go down like the color spectrum and then probably um, if there's room on the other side of this wall, which it looks like there is a little bit, um, either right here or just at the end of the hallway, we'll have just normal chests for anything else I decide to put through there, like books. Because right now, all I can think of is just um, concrete and the bookshelves. And that's really all I think I can think of that could be useful. Another thing I would be thinking is all this coal, and I think I have maybe a little redstone somewhere, uh, probably in the storage system, but I wouldn't be getting fortune on it, so I might still just do that over there one day, which honestly, I don't know if I'm ever going to um, convert all this. Coal is surprisingly one of those things I don't need too often. Um, right now, it's really only for this and torches, and really, I can replace all this coal in here with... Um, um, bamboo now which I don't even have that much coal left so I'll probably do that once I run out of coal in there I think I'm gonna figure this out a little more and then start to get this set up and if you're wondering yes um, the tree farms right behind it we should be able to put a hopper line right here um, in between and it shouldn't mess with it unless we're using the tree farm which if we're using the tree farm then we won't be using this so it should be fine. So yeah, I'll just put the sorting for the concrete above the roof here. I'm not really planning on having another level above. Uh, maybe that'll change one day, but for now, uh, I'm not planning on putting anything above this um, level. Another thing is, um, if I do like the rainbow on this side, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for this side. I guess I'll probably just end up mirroring the rainbow. On this side but if I do that then I probably want this closed to where maybe I'll have to do a little bit of a piston door to get in here which um, kind of sounds exciting because I haven't done that yet I don't think so yeah that'll probably be the plan for that and the reason this is here which I can take it down was kind of just a blueprint for the piston pusher over there but yeah I can take this down now but yeah I'm gonna get this rainbow wall in and get the sorting system in and I'll be back Oh man, alright, so major problems have happened, um, not really sure how, um, so I was trying to get, um, eight of each color just to start this rainbow wall, and, uh, obviously, um, I have a little bit more white and cyan because I just had some extra in my inventory from this and that. I got, um, all of these in there in the system. And about three-fourths of the way through, maybe even halfway through, I got jammed right here. And that usually doesn't happen. Um, that usually only happens on servers, apparently. Um, according to Mumbo, that usually only happens on servers. So right then, I probably should have known something was wrong. But um, I pushed the rest of the through or rest of the concrete through um, after it got unjammed. And um, I went over to grab some books. To kind of push the rest of the concrete through 
Uh, I want to do that because I tried fixing this a little bit, which is this is way different right now. Well, maybe not really different, but it's a little different. And I want to see what if, if what I tried fixed it, which I still don't know. But um, so I left it running and ran over there to trade real quick, which I'm not sure if that was a problem. Either way, if that was or wasn't a problem, I'm not gonna do that again. But came back and started pushing the books in and see, I think pushing the books in was fine but when I came back um, I saw there's a couple of these missing there's like two missing here then this was missing I was like oh maybe that's just because of the radius and maybe I didn't account for that I didn't think anything of it then even so I pushed um, some books through and then went to turn the farm off came up here and not too much was broken so I turned the farm off and uh, there's a couple of glowstone broken and about half of this was broken right here um, half of the piston pushers right here were broken and but down here everything was broken um, as you can see some of this still is still here um, it turns out that if you turn this off at the wrong time um, it actually won't hold the TNT there. It'll just drop it to where the TNT ex is exploding like right here Not really sure if that's uh, my problem or the problem with this. I'm assuming it's my problem because um, Looking at mumbo jumbo's video. I he obviously doesn't have a tutorial. So I kind of just went off of um, Like screenshots of everything. But yeah, I'm assuming I messed something up but as long as it doesn't explode up there. It's fine which brings me also to my next point is somehow it did explode up there. So somehow it got close enough to where it exploded like those three furnaces right there I think. And some of that glowstone. Not really sure how that happened. So that had to have happened before I turned that off I'm pretty sure. Because if anything those those are going to be staying out keeping that longer it shouldn't be keeping the tnt longer no matter what i feel i'm kind of afraid to keep <laughs> attempting this but i mean i'm gonna have to if i ever want this to work i'm noticing today that my talking is kind of a lot worse than it usually is um i figure i address that now i have a couple of talking disorders um the main one being a stutter so that's the main reason i cut a lot of stuff out uh it's not severe um, it's not like the worst case of stuttering that you've ever seen, but it does happen. Also, I have mildly severe ADHD. That doesn't actually always completely affect me, but right now it really is for some reason. It can ramp up depending on a number of certain things, um, like stress could ramp up my ADHD and stuff like that. Um, but the main problem with me talking and having um, really bad ADHD is I get ahead of myself a lot so my brain's actually like a sentence of, it, it, well this isn't exact but this is the way I'm going to explain it uh, my brain is actually like a sentence ahead of what I'm saying so I'll be talking about um, sentence A but my brain's already on sentence B sometimes I find myself even getting worse than that to where I'll be talking like my mouth will be saying sentence A but I'm on like sentence C or D already uh, so that that combined with stuttering really just like is like the perfect storm for not being able to talk right <laughs> So yeah, that's why some episodes and um, some segments or some parts of episodes are like a lot worse than others And that's the main reason for my cutting a lot. I find myself having to go back and saying like um, parts of the episode up to like five times just to make sure I'm slowing down and saying it and also I find when I'm editing there's a lot of things I can't actually understand um, which I'm sure if I can't understand it you 100% can't understand it so I'm trying to work on that um, so if I find myself doing that I'll just have to restart and that's why um, there's a lot of weird jump cuts and stuff like that so I figure I addressed that a little bit. That isn't the full extent of everything. That's just kind of like a basic um, outline of what is going on. Right now, I can actually feel my whole body like getting like super jittery. Like you're on like a whole bunch of like coffee or something. Like you just like took like a, a crazy amount of coffee. 
So that's a real reason right now why everything's kind of crazy right now. Or I might be talking super fast or whatever. So yeah, back to this. Um, I'm not really sure how to fix that. Um, just because obviously I didn't design this myself. I don't know if I said this yet. I've actually looked at another YouTuber's tutorial. I think he did the tutorial on Mumbo Jumbo's design, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe the YouTuber's name is Raging Donut. Um, and the only thing I use from his video is actually this part right here. Um, and even then I changed it a little bit. So yeah, not really sure how to fix it. If I keep on having problems with this, and especially if this whole thing explodes, um, I will actually just follow Raging um, Donuts tutorial to like the full. So I'll just do it block for block. Um, also, I'll have his video linked in the description as long as Mumbo Jumbo, as I said earlier. One thing was what I was talking about earlier is uh, with the ADHD and everything, I am probably like the most forgetful person ever. So hopefully I remember to fit those videos in there. I know I probably already forgot on a couple videos. I think whichever video had that um, clock from Iskal, I think I forgot to link his. So I think I'll have to do that after this. All right, so hopefully all that made sense. Probably didn't just because I don't make sense a lot. But for now, I think I'm gonna start working on the collection system again. Um, so I'm gonna put the water back and then we'll probably yeah, I'll jump down here real quick. So we'll probably have water going down here and Then another stream going under my path. That's gonna be here. Well, hmm Now that I'm saying that It doesn't sound like a great idea. Yeah, so not sure where the next level is gonna be and even then uh, We'll have a third level eventually so we can't really go under the path now think about it completely so I'll probably have another water stream going this way and bring it out here and we'll probably come up uh, somewhere over here I also have this obsidian right here because well I was gonna say that I was planning on having the storage for the logs here but now that I'm looking at it there's not enough room for it so let me try to work this out on camera real quick um, so this would be the pathway right here, five wide, and then the, uh, let's fill this in, I suppose, where it should be. So yeah, the pathway would be right here. The acacia pillar would be right here. So I think the concrete, or however we're decorating it, would be right here. And then the chest, and then the chest would probably start here. So that's how I'm thinking the um, design for this um, this part of the base would be. So this would just be copied all the way down until we get to like dark oak. So that would be like six. Um, there would be like six stalls of this for each type of wood. So that means the chest would be there would be a double chest right here and just enough space for the hoppers to get in here. So definitely not enough for the sorting system right here. It's definitely changing plans so I definitely don't want to fix or change any of this so we'll have to figure this out when it when we get to it um, because I don't think this is gonna work anymore I don't think I accounted for the sorting system I just accounted for the hopper which um, kind of sucks I'm trying to think if I can sort it somewhere else like over here so I can sort all five of the logs right here, or all six of the logs right here, in this area, and then that would mean I would have to have six different lines of hoppers or water streams going to each individual cell of storage. I guess we would only have to do that for half of them, because once we get past here, then we can fit the storage system in. Or the sorting system in so I think that's manageable so I think this is still a valid idea for now uh, once we get to it obviously that could change but once again you can see how off topic I get very quickly so just to kind of reiterate the plan here so we're gonna have the water stream coming here and then going over there and then we'll have a bubble stream to bring all the concrete or whatever we're exploding and then we'll bring it up here 
and then we'll have the sorting system above this level right here uh, once again then I apologize for probably how off topic and all over the place I just was right there hopefully it's not as bad as I think when I go back and edit but I'm sure it will be so yeah um, but yeah I'm gonna get started on that now alright so not a lot of progress has been made really I just got the stream set up to where the things that get exploded end up up here right now and I went ahead and tried to get eight of each of the colors and uh, this is what I ended up getting. This is looking like only getting half of what you're painting in, which is horrible compared to what I thought was like less than 10% was getting destroyed. Um, I'm really not sure why that's happening. I Like obviously it would be great if I could um, get another account on here, but I can't. I'm not really sure how you do that. Yeah, so if I'm only getting half back, that's just not good enough. Okay, so I've been starting to look into this a little bit more, and I've been just turning it on and then throwing blocks up here in case, like, some of these land here, which they might. So, um, but if they do, um, the TNT doesn't really ever seem to blow these up but I am going to extend this all the way up to the max of however high I can do it so probably like right here so I'll extend this wall up but also um, I was throwing blocks here and they always get blown up if they land right here so I think um, my plan is to just build this wall all the way down to right here and have a three wide um, lane of or a three wide water stream to where no matter where they land they'll be getting pushed away i also was throwing blocks here so as soon as the tnt exploded i threw a few blocks and they would always get out of the way in time so i'm thinking they have to be landing on top of here or there so i'm going to go back to the end and probably get a couple more stacks of um obsidian i'm actually completely out i have about three left so yeah okay so I've actually fixed the whole farm um, the yeah the only problem was they were just um, getting stuck up here and then the TNT was exploding them so I just had to extend this out also I fit this wall up um, to make sure um, no TNT accidentally gets flung over here but if the TNT exploded like right here it would destroy whatever I'm putting here but now that the walls here it shouldn't and we also went ahead and finished this hallway, um, at least the walls of it. And I have fit all the concrete that I've um, used so far or made in here. Uh, I don't have the item sorter in there yet. Uh, I think I'm going to do that off camera. Um, but yeah, I did, or I went ahead and did a stack of each and I got a perfect amount back. Um, so I got everything back basically. Uh, obviously, I've used some of them already. Um, to make the finish the walls and the blues a little more because of this right here. Um, it's just a little door to get into the maker. Yeah, I put a slab here just so I can't jam up. Um, I just think that's better. I might change this door eventually. I think it would be better to have a little more space in there. Um, so I'd rather have like these two pull out. Um, if I can get that to happen, I'm not really sure if I could. Uh, I think I might be able to. Not, uh, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, that might have to wait till we get honey blocks. Uh, I don't know if I actually need honey blocks to do that. Um, just I would have to make um, some changes. But that's actually gonna be the end of the episode. Leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.